Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 253, and it is titled, How to Strengthen Your Relationship with Your Partner's Family. So this is actually something that we haven't talked about on the show, but I think it's a really important topic to talk about, which is how do you get along with your in-laws? So, you know, we, we think about relationship always as the relationship between just the two people. But unless you live really far away from your in-laws, which actually uh, my wife and I did live far away from both of our in-laws, but even still it has an impact, um, there is a relationship there that is developed, which can have either really positive consequences or really negative consequences. And we unfortunately see that a lot where one side or the other, they don't get along with the in-laws and that can put a lot of stress on a relationship. So today we're going to talk about, uh, how to nurture those relationships, where people go wrong, what they can do to be better at it. Uh, and some differences, some cultural differences. Uh, the show isn't specifically about cultural differences, but it is a factor. And as listeners of the show know, Celine was from Switzerland, and so there were definitely cultural differences there and language differences and all that. So I have personal experience, as does my guest today. So uh, I think this is going to be a really interesting show. But before we do that, quick word from our sponsor. Do you want to join the secret club of men who are great in bed? Then check out Power and Mastery. It is the most complete sexual mastery training for men. Whether you want to have harder erections, last longer, or increase your sexual skills, there is something for you at powerandmastery.com. Okay, so first of all, I forgot to ask you, I know I haven't officially welcomed you to the show yet, but do you pronounce your name Guy or Guy? Uh, the spelling is Guy. But uh, in French, uh, we say Guy. Okay. Well, having a little bit of French background, I assumed the French pronunciation would be Guy, but then I thought I shouldn't make that assumption and I should ask. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So Guy Blaise is an author and Frenchman living and working in America. Previously, he lived in Eastern France and Paris, where he witnessed the dating experiences of the strong women in his family and listened closely to his grandmother's advice about love. After two decades of living between France and the United States and being struck by the differences between two cultures' approaches to romance and sex, he began writing books offering his insights and started the French Perspective blog. So, you know, this show, first of all, welcome to the show, Guy. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. So this is interesting because... because you know, I dated and was married to essentially a French woman. I mean, she was from Switzerland, but she lived really right on the border between Switzerland and France in the French speaking and French cultural part of Switzerland. Okay. I have uh, a unique sort of insight into the cultural differences about how those cultures treat sex, love and romance. Exactly. Um, and they are they are actually quite different. And so I'm kind of excited to talk a little bit about that, especially how that factors into, you know, how you're dealing with the families, right? When you have two families that are from different cultures. Yeah. yeah. Before we dive into that, though, mm -hmm. the first thing I want to ask you is, okay, so because of your background, because being a native Frenchman, but you've lived here in the U.S. and you're a trained scientist, I'm wondering if you could tell the audience a little bit about your background, because you know, if people read your bio and they say, oh, he's a trained scientist. Okay, he's lived in both places. Yeah. But how how has your background influenced uh, your insights when it comes to relationships and cultural differences? And how did that lead you into writing books about it? Well, you know, I, I left France um, because I got a job here in the United States. So um, I study, I was an engineer and then become a scientist. So, so I'm more focused on science. Um, and then uh, living here, I start observing the society when it comes to dating. 
the first thing that you know you notice here, oh, PDA, you know, and you wonder, well, well the American don't kiss in public, you know, it like a couple walking on the street, you kind of like, why they don't hold hands? So I start observing it. And then I start writing letters explaining to my siblings and friends in France. And then one day, a good friend of mine said, oh, why don't you write a, a, a book about it? I said, oh, I never thought about it. And then uh, I recall all the conversation that I had with uh, many people and I kind of uh, making it as a topic. That's how I came out uh, right with uh, about the, the relationship and dating here in America. I become an accidental writer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's interesting because, you know, I see a lot of people being an entrepreneur. I see a lot of entrepreneurial people say, I'm going to write a book and I'm just instantly going to be famous and everybody's going to love it and I'm going to make all this money. And anybody that's written a book knows that that's not really the way that it works. Yeah. However, in your experience, you became an accidental writer, but people seem to really like what you wrote and they kind of wanted more. Tell us a little bit about that. Like what was the response to that initial accidental book that you wrote? So I wrote a book called Vive la Difference, a Frenchman perspective on American woman. So it was just my experience, a conversation with the people, a woman and my colleagues, some of my friends at work complaining, you know, you, you get a weekend, Friday, Saturday, people go on their family and you meet a colleague on Monday, you say, how was your weekend? Or the guy sitting, uh, drinking a coffee with me and start complaining about his wife. So you say like, oh my God, you know, in France, if you talk bad about your partner, it's embarrassing. But here is like someone want to vent, you know, his frustration. Oh, you know, my wife, uh, oh, I cut the grass, uh, you know. Oh, my wife, we, we had an argument. He's like, okay, you sit there and just listening. Well, he giving me a topic there to write about. So, and then it's an accumulation of letters, uh, uh, topics that I have accumulated. And I wrote about uh, the American, how I perceive it. Well, of course, as a result of that, that book called Vive la Difference, a Frenchman perspective on American woman. I made a comment one day. I said, oh, wow, if American women were a coffee mug, they probably will know what their husband talk about them. <laughs> so the, the reaction was so big. So I decided to write to, to collect all the letters that I got from, from the reaction, the review. And I reached out to some women book clubs. And I ask them, so if you guys have questions to ask me that you miss in the book, just let me know. So I got about 300 letters. So I selected the 60 best letters and the best questions. So I, I make it a book called uh, Love Like the French. So the 60 questions, all the topics, uh, sexuality, uh, violence, and libido and lack of intimacy in a marriage, uh, you name it. So that's how I become a second. So that was my second book. Well, of course, they keep, the, the review keep coming. And I think we love like the French is right now a bestseller on, um, on Amazon. And um, I decided to write another book called Love Like a Man uh, as a result of Love Like the French. Uh, just uh, uh, a best advice to American men to be a better partner <laughs> if they can learn from the French. <laughs> now, see, we could do a whole show on each one of those books, and we don't really have time for that in this episode. But I wanted to maybe touch on a couple of things, because the, the point of this show really is talking about, you know, how do we manage those relationships with our our, our uh, you know in-laws and you know bringing in the cultural differences however <laughs> you just started talking a little bit about the differences between french and american women mm -hmm. i can't pass over that without asking you a little bit about it so okay. what are because i have my I believe me, years of being with a french woman i have my own opinions on this but i'm really curious what do you see are some of the main differences between french and american women well, the French women are more uh, 
uh, how to say it in English, exigent, um, very uh, outspoken. Mm -hmm. um, they set the bar a little bit high about the expect expectations with their partner. Um, but here is a, I just noticed a uh, woman much more lay back, no, no really challenge men very much. Uh, our French women kind of uh, add so much layer to like uh, the expectation is so high. Uh, you have to be like this and this. Uh, they test your manners, they, you know, in, in order for them to feel comfortable with you. But but here in America, oh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a different culture. So you have to basically pay attention. Like uh, uh, in in France, uh, you know, see a woman uh, go to a, to a store after the gym. Uh, here, a woman can go for the gym and from, go to the store and wearing, you know, the sweat, you know, the, you know, it's like a, it's a faux pas, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. so you have to get used to it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they have made whole satire videos on the ladies going from yoga class to the grocery store or whatever. It's, it, it, it's pretty funny. Exactly. And sometimes holding the yoga mat on the, you mm -hmm. know, going into like, wow, you, you know. So, you know, so many nuances, so many differences. <laughs> so, you know, I I don't know if we talked about this in the pre-interview, and I don't think I've actually ever talked about it on the show. Everybody that listens to the show that's a regular listener obviously knows Celine and what her background was. But what they probably don't know is that I've also dated several other women from French backgrounds. So... Oh. I was very seriously involved for a number of years with another woman who was from France. Okay. And even prior to that, I dated somebody who was from Quebec, all okay. native French speakers, all from French cultures. And, you know, people will kind of tease me about that a little bit. And they're like, ha ha, you obviously have a thing for French women. I'm like, I didn't even know they were French when I first met them. You know, it's not like I, it's, oh, she's French. I'm going to go date her. So it took me a while to kind of think about that like why is it that i was attracted to these particular women that's your destiny it's <laughs> maybe but I'll, I'll i'll tell you so since we're talking about main differences between french and american women just just briefly as an aside here on the show here's what i learned what i figured out uh at least for me and i'm not saying this is true across the board so american women if you're listening don't get all upset and bent out of shape here but yeah but one of the things that i noticed was that french women tend to be more in their feminine. Yes. American women tend to operate more from their masculine. It, and so what I realized is the reason why I kept being attracted to these French women is because they were so feminine. So yeah. like, here's, here's another, not to say that women's yoga clothes aren't feminine because they do accentuate a lot of the feminine qualities of their bodies. However, a French woman would be more likely to go home and put on a dress and go to the store. Exactly. And, and uh, that's where they raise um, because they have to be aware of their uh, how they appear, um, skirt, dress. Those are the, you know the femininity of uh, women and being self-aware of also of their their weight, uh, what they eat. Um, it's always a, a reminder, and it's not for for the men; it's for themselves, for their own self-esteem. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just the way the culture is. Yeah. So that was that was a big uh, sort of aha for me. I'm like, oh, I get it. I see what it is that I am attracted to. So, you know, it, for listeners who are listening, both ladies and men, uh, granted, I am not representing all men out there, but I, I think I am relatively normal in a sense that a lot of men are looking for women that are embracing their femininity so that's yeah, yeah. that's maybe a takeaway from that part okay i didn't want to go too far down that rabbit hole but i couldn't pass that up without asking that question to you let's kind of go get back on track here with the subject matter that we originally intended to cover mm -hmm. uh, and we're talking about sort of family and in-law dynamics yeah. so i'm curious what some of what are some of those family in-law dynamics that you have witnessed um, well, the dynamic is that, you know, it's about how comfortable you are with the people you meet. First of all, it's a big challenge when you meet your in-laws for the first time. 
but I always believe that the, the your partner should be your your ambassador to, to her own family. Um, you know, kind of prepare the ground before the first meeting. Uh, make sure that you know you coach your partner the the things you should not say or be aware of. You know, because here in America, I just notice that politics is one of the the things that can make people crash. So yeah, I, I would look at that that way. That also the way you make a decision when you a partner, you want to introduce your partner to your family, depend on your comfort zone, how comfortable you are uh, before you cross that line. You know. So mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, you you make a really good point there about your partner should be your ambassador. And uh, there's an old comedy movie here in the United States called Meet the Parents. Uh, oh, you, right, right. You, you've probably seen. It. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of a lot of listeners have seen that movie. Uh, it's a great, funny movie. Uh, I've watched it numerous times over the years. But what you see represented in that movie, and I, granted, it's a comedy and it's an exaggeration. Yeah. But what you see is when they go to meet the parents for the first time, the woman in the couple tends to really like she just jumps in with her family and it's all about her and the family and he's kind of like on the outside making all these yeah. mistakes because she's yeah. not helping him integrate exactly. into that family yeah and while that's an exaggeration uh you you do see that quite a lot and i think the point that you made Guy, is is totally spot on which is that you need to be the ambassador you should be telling your partner if if it's your family they're meeting here's how they do things here's the expectations they have here's yeah. how you should act around them here's what will set you up for success exactly exactly because you need to coach your partner um there are some crazy topics that you know oh if you don't believe in god don't come and tell to your future in law that you are atheist <laughs> that's a bad start <laughs> You know, or just don't have an opinion or don't be critical about religion. You know, all these things is your job as a partner to coach your partner so that the, the meeting can go smooth. <laughs> so what would you say? OK, let's say you're you're meeting your in-laws for the first time. Yeah. And, and you feel like maybe you weren't properly prepared by your partner. Um, what, what do you think, like, how would you go about asking your partner for, hey, could you help me out here a little bit? Well, things that are very important, religion, politics, how you were raised, what your parents don't like to talk about. Those are basic questions that you need to know ahead before you meet them. And then also sometimes, I mean, Dads, if you're a guy and her dad probably will check you, screen you more than, than <laughs> you know, he want to know that what you think. And, you know, that often are the protector of the daughter. So you have to know before you meet them and also how comfortable you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and be reserved. Don't just jump in and start talking about things that can, you know, put you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know, that that brings up another question is, and I, I've been in this position, as I'm sure most men have many times, uh, which is, okay, you are meeting her dad for the very first time. What are some general guidelines that they should follow? How should they behave in that situation? Well, I always say, right, treat them like, they were your best customer. So yeah. behave because you know it's like a test. They were looking at you, they tell you know, because I'm sure they hear about you, but actually they're mirroring you for the first time. Your dress code, your manners, your words your attitude in general. I mean, everything matters. So 
I would know just jump, you know, just learn to know them uh, to their daughter and bring the conversation about the things you know about them. Yeah, ah, that's a very good point as well. Don't make it all about yourself. Oh, yeah. Interact with them and, and, and make it a point to, to get to know them. Yeah. And you can, you can do that by starting off by talking about the things that you know, like, oh, so, you know, uh, so-and-so tells me that well, you're mm -hmm. into boats and yeah. tell me about that. Or you, you do this for a living. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That show that you, you are interested to know them. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's all centered on you, I, 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 well, that's, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you want to show that you're interested and you want to also, uh, pay attention um to all those sort of little details and how you show up and and i like uh the way you said it treat them as if they are your best customer yeah uh, i think another way of, of looking at it too is that this is a very important job interview that you are going it on is. actually it's a job interview because that impression and don't be acting you know be be yourself be you know natural uh, don't just have uh, the best be at your best behavior at that moment and then the next hour you're a jerk you know that's that's unacceptable no be yourself and mm. show interest that you know about a little bit more about them and bring those topics and what they do what yeah what has been your own personal experience with this uh, well you know i have multiple life uh, you know i have <laughs> <laughs> the, um, you know, from the German to the Americans, you know, it, it was, I'm very reserved and I usually like to listen more than saying, which make people comfortable. And when you listen and you show that you, you know them and you know a little bit more about what they do, those are the areas you have to be uh, dealing with, just stay in those, that attitude. And uh, also because they watch you, they know how you talk to their daughter or how how you behave around her. They can tell. They know kids. They know if you really being acting or not. Well, just be at your best behavior, and and that should be consistent even after, you know. That just be be natural. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's an, another important point to make, which is to really be yourself and be natural. Because you know, it, it's funny. This changes as we get older, but let's say you're a young couple, right? And you're, you're meeting the in-laws for the first time. Young people always tend to look at older people and think, these people don't know anything. They're so old school. They have no idea what we're up to as, you know, in this generation. And they completely fail to realize that their parents most likely have been there and done that. I know all this stuff. They're looking at you and they've got you pinpointed immediately from the moment that they meet you. Exactly. We have a saying in French, you can teach an old monkey how to make gestures. So, <laughs> so the dad knows. <laughs> and, you know, they, they know, but don't just think that all, you know, they old people know. The old people actually have a more experience than the Oh. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, one thing I've done for many years, just as sort of a side thing, because I enjoy it is, um, you know, I've been a martial artist for, for many years, and yeah. I've taught martial arts for a lot of years, too. And I taught primarily like teenagers, yeah. martial arts. Yeah. And uh, so I have a lot of experience with this, you know, they come in and they like, they don't want to tell me things. And they, they talk to me like I'm some old guy that doesn't know anything, <laughs> right? And so then, then we have some really frank conversations and I'm like, Hey, look, I'm not your dad. So I can tell you things that your dad isn't going to tell you, but <laughs> trust me, he knows all of this. He's been there and done that too. <laughs> yeah. 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 They think the world started just at their generation. So life didn't exist before. <laughs> right. Exactly. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about cultural differences because that's a big factor that comes in here as well. What are some of the challenges you see? Because I, I know these, I can answer this question immediately, but I want to hear your perspective. What are some of the challenges that come in when you're meeting in-laws and they're from a different culture? Well, 
Parce que they, they don't see the world in the same way. Some people, some family may think that the world is flat, you know, and you come in with your vision that, you know, the world is different. But I would say the difference is more how, you know, they were raised. Everybody come out just like a, they come from their own culture. So if you're meeting them, learn about their background, how they were raised, which area, you know, like in, in the United States here, I see every area, region of United States have uh, like the South, more, you know, Christians. Um, so you have to, to acknowledge those things and respect the differences. And not jumping on conclusions or trying to judge anybody or just communicate openly, um, openly and, um, and, uh, be more respectful you know, to the people. Yeah, that's that's a great point is if it is a culture that's very different than yours, then it would be a good idea to take some time to at least learn a few yeah. basics about it exactly. so that you can understand where they're coming from. Because what you said is absolutely true that different cultures see the world differently. They have different perspectives, oh, yeah. um, you know, especially... <laughs> I see this a lot in the U.S., less so in Europe. Mm. Uh, but in the U.S., you, it's very common to run into people who've never been out of the country. They've yes. never left the United States. And so yeah. they've been in this bubble of American culture their entire lives. Yeah. And so therefore, they see the entire world through the lens of American culture. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you've traveled a bit or you, maybe you've lived in another country for a while, you can see that the perspectives can be really, really different. Um, something I think uh, European people, be, one, because Europe is so small and because the cultures are so different uh, between all of those countries and people tend to travel around through those exactly. countries a lot, they yeah. get different perspectives more often than we do here on this giant piece of land we call America. It's all relatively similar. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, like an island. America is like an island. I mean, you meet people, they say, oh, I just came from vacation. What did you do? Oh, I was just around taking care of my house and go fishing. And wow, you got four weeks and you just stay around. So <laughs> and you can't go far. And also the, the challenge that I can have, the topics that you can talk to people, they're very limited. Uh, you can talk about Spain. Because they've never been. Um, uh, when you look at the world news here, it's limited to America. War, they call it world news. <laughs> but unless there is a terror, terror somewhere or some big event in the world to talk about it, but they just talk briefly about it and pass. So, yeah, the joke here is that you learn about uh, uh, people learn here when there is a war time, you know. Why we talk about Ukraine, uh, you know, because something is going on. So it's sometimes very challenging to have a conversation with someone because they just never travel or they never left the state. Uh, yeah, that that can definitely be a chance. One, because as you pointed out, they don't have the experience because they haven't been there. But but two, you're you're right. I mean, we call it world news, but the reality is, is the only time we hear about it is if uh, the U.S. military or some politicians happen to be over there for some particular reason, right? Then we hear about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, that's yeah. You know, another another cultural difference uh, that really factors in, especially when it comes to meeting the in-laws that I've personally experienced, is language differences or language barriers. Yeah. Yeah. What has your experience been with that? Well, the language is, of course, you have a, if you got an accent like me, well, of course, they will ask you where you're from, right? So, and then uh, you happen to be colored or black. Of course, they want to know because uh, uh, the, the idea that all the French are white, for example, <laughs> it's, it's an assumption, you know, that. And then you have to explain, you know, give all more details. And then when you go to Paris, you see people of color. We got the Jewish, you got the Arabs. And, well, it's a, it's an interesting experience because this, 
how America can perceive the rest of the world. It's just, uh, I, I don't know why it's so uh, limited at, at that level, but, you know, it's, because, uh, I mean, the country is so big, it's a continent. <laughs> it is, and I think that's one of the problems is it's big, but it is relatively similar across all of that landmass, right? So yeah. you can travel quite a distance, but the culture really doesn't change all that much. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And, Definitely. And, and we're relatively isolated from other cultures. I mean, with the exception of Quebec, Canadian culture isn't much different from the U.S. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mexican culture is quite different, but we only border Mexico for a certain amount. And a lot of people don't really, you know, unless you live in California, uh, Texas or Arizona, you don't really have any contact with with yeah. the Mexican culture. So, yeah, um, we just you don't... Know, Go ahead. I know you notice also that Mexican become a generic of Latinos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that does seem to happen sometimes too, <laughs> which, you know, anybody who is Mexican or Spanish or any other Latin country would know that each one of them have their own distinct cultures, even though they might share the same language. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, so all of these things can really come in uh, and present additional challenges when it comes to meeting your in-laws. I know for me, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning more French. I'm getting better at it. I do my, <laughs> my French practice uh, every day. I, <laughs> I'm sure Celine's probably laughing on the other side going, now you've finally gotten serious about learning your French. <laughs> the problem is, is I relied too much on her when she was alive to translate because she was fantastic with language and she could instantly translate in either perfect English or perfect French back and forth That's seamlessly. Nice. <laughs> and, and it was just so easy that it was easier to just let her do it than to stumble my way through trying to get better at my own French. And um, yeah. so unfortunately, I relied too much on her, but now I'm really working on it. And uh, but, you know, prior to doing that, it, it presented a challenge because it's it's harder to communicate um more complex concepts and emotions and feelings to your in-laws when you don't have the language skills and you know we have translation tools but they don't do good with feelings and complex ideas well you keep traveling go keep going back to france and you will uh, improve <laughs> yeah, well that is the best way to learn a new language is to go immerse yourself in it and live there for a while yeah it's a yeah. uh, very important i was want to point to a point like when you meet somebody, uh, you dating someone who's different. Of course, you do your homework, you know, uh, by learning about their culture, their country. The like we have a saying in French. Um, uh, I'm translating it. If you love love a dog, you have to support their fleas. <laughs> so, and so you have to do your best to to study, learn about their culture, so that you can fit in um in that culture yeah. yeah and and just you know sometimes people think that they have to either really know the language or know lots about the culture in order for their in-laws to you know like them or accept them and i would say that all they really want is for you to make an effort yes yes show them that you're interested because um, differences is very beautiful differences difference really make you grow i think life would be boring if everybody you know just marry the same people same culture life would be boring i mean differences you always learn something i mean you just came from switzerland right so you you go to france and that help you to see a different perspective of life yeah i'll I tell you that i left france i don't regret it you know to come here and discover because my vision of America was different from France. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge uh, proponent of people at least getting out and traveling, especially when they're young. Yeah. You know, the, the idea, you know, I, I wouldn't have done it when I was younger because I wasn't quite ready for it uh, maturity wise yet. But 
as an adult, I look back and I think, man, when I was at school age, I should have gone and studied abroad. That yeah. is such a critical and important time to get out and see the world yeah. and all the differences out there before the programming from where you live gets exactly. too deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, young people are missing so many opportunities uh, to see and learn different language. It's always adding you a plus. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so my uh, my family, my heritage comes from a bunch of different European countries, mm -hmm. but I'm mostly, if you look at the makeup of my ancestors, mostly Italian. Okay. So, but I didn't even know that my grandfather spoke Italian until wow. I was in my 20s because wow. he never spoke it. Wow. And what's interesting is, you know, I, I asked him about, that and, and some of the other uh, cultural stuff. And his answer to that really was, well, you know, when we came here to America, uh, we, we were Americans and that was it, right? Like, and basically the idea is they really wanted to fit in. Yeah. They yeah. didn't care about their culture, but they didn't want to be seen as different when they got here. So for yeah. them, it was like, nope, we're in America. We speak English now, right? Yeah. We yeah. are Americans now because this is where we live and that's that. And they just wanted to assimilate and fit in. Yeah. I totally understand that. The negative side of that is all the descendants now have lost. The, yeah. And that, you, know, you probably have still family there. I Cousins. Do. Oh, yeah, I I'm sure. What right. opportunity that gives you to, you know, fly to Italy, see your family. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I, I'm actually uh, an Italian citizen also. So oh, nice. That's yeah. that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, just that, that idea of, um, back then they didn't embrace speaking multiple languages, but, yeah. but we also didn't live in a global society back then either. Yeah. Now yeah. we do. People can move around all over. We've got technology to connect us. Uh, it's very common to interact with other cultures. And so having that, that, um, uh, ability to speak multiple languages is extremely helpful in today's world. It is very, very important. Okay, one quick break uh, for a sponsor. I got a couple more questions to ask you after that. Okay. Hey guys, you know what makes a man great? You know the kind of masculine man that women are irresistibly attracted to and want. Is it money, job title, his physical body, being great in bed, a big penis, great pickup lines. But what if you don't have those or only some of them? What if you've had a string of failed relationships, are embarrassed by your bedroom skills, doubt whether you can rise to the occasion, worry about lasting long enough, or are always stuck in the friend zone? I can help you. If you are ready to make big changes and finally become the man you have always wanted to be, then this is the program for you. To find out more, go to kevinandceline.com forward slash go forward slash warrior. That is kevinandceline.com forward slash go forward slash warrior. That is where you can reach out to me and schedule a strategy call so we can talk about how I can help you get to where you want to be with your sex, love, and relationship. Okay, so we've been talking about, you know, what it's like when you meet your in-laws, how you should behave when you meet with them, how cultural differences affect that sort of thing. Are there any last guidelines or recommendations you have for people when they're about to meet their in-laws? Do your homework and know that when you get to know them, always try to spend time with them. What's the best way to know someone is to spend time with them. Of course, I'm not saying invite yourself to the, the place, but always be happy to see them and make yourself available. Sometimes, how can I help? How can I, you know, we think it's uh, the parent in law can be. Uh, certain generation they may you know have you know certain age but when you are on them offer any support any help they need while you are on them don't wait to be asked you know mm -hmm. 
if your future mother-in-law is trying to do something or whatever, you say, how can I help? You don't make your make them feel like you you are someone who can assimilate to their lifestyle or you know get yourself in a yeah, very important. Yeah. You know, I would say because we see this a lot in like movies and TV shows, this yeah. this idea of how difficult it is to meet the parents or to spend time with the in-laws and you see the, you know, all the times like, oh no, we have to go see the in-laws. This is going to be terrible, right? Yeah. I just want people to know that if you follow the advice here, the, 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 the advice that Guy is giving, and if you read the book and you get deeper into it, you can really have an amazing relationship with your oh, yeah. in-laws. And, you know, I just spent two weeks by myself with Celine's parents, uh, my in-laws, uh, living with them, you know, not staying at a hotel and just getting together for dinner, but living with them on their property. In and France. it was amazing. Yeah, in France. And it, we had a really uh, beautiful time together. And it can be like that. You can have that type of relationship with your in-laws if you, and, if you try, and, if you work And you it. learn to know them more every time you see them. You discover something about them. Exactly. That's, that's yep. very amazing. Yeah. And you know, I mean, obviously there there were some uh, some reasons why we got together around you know Celine's passing, but it wasn't just about that. And you know, the beautiful thing is, is they're the ones that reached out to me and invited me and wanted me to come stay with them. So that shows you a little bit about. The relationship that we've cultivated over the years exactly and uh and uh, sometime in the situation also you notice that oh when there is a death um sometimes people cut the, the ties uh which is unfortunate you know that people will not talk again because the person that like the, the liaison between you and them is not there anymore but no that does not mean that uh, you should not be keeping the same relation you used to have. It's very important. Exactly. And we we both on their end and on my end, we both made that very clear right mm -hmm. from the beginning that we wanted to stay in contact and continue to nurture that relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have we're 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 getting close to the end of the show here, but uh, I wanted to ask you about another book briefly that you've written because <laughs> I find this interesting also, um, which is the um, Love Like a Man, A French Man's Guide to Help American Men Be Better Partners. Yes. I'm curious from your perspective, what are the biggest mistakes you see American men making? Well, too aggressive. Like they've been trained or raised in a way that a man should not show their emotion. That's stupid. At the end of the day, any human, we all have our moment of, a, of a vulnerability of showing emotions. But if you want to hide, because I think most of the frustration I hear from women here, people don't open up. They get closed. They don't share their feelings. So I don't know any woman who can be a mind reader, <laughs> you know. See, if you don't open up, and that does not make you a weak person. No, I think the most you communicate, the better. Sometimes miscommunication can be what can mislead, you know, all your relation can go wrong because you're hiding things that you think, oh, if I cry, you know. Now you being in France, you see men cry because they want to, you know, but that does not make them less men. So that's one of the big, big things that I notice here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love that point about, you know, showing your emotions doesn't make you weak. No, not necessarily. You, you can, you're a black belt. You can cry. That's okay. C'est la vie. <laughs> that does not make you that you're going to lose your, your level, your black belt, you know? Exactly. <laughs> So that's a, one of the frustration I get from from American women here. That oh, he doesn't open up, 
um, he, you know, does not share his feelings. And oh, okay, so then what? What will happen after that? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for guys listening, <laughs> the takeaway from that is to allow yourself to open up a bit more, be a little bit more vulnerable, show your emotion in appropriate ways. And respect to women. Respect to women. I mean, it's uh, it's it's like you're shooting yourself on your foot if you don't. I mean, woman is your wife, your your sister, your aunt. I mean, I mean, you know, the B word I hear often. You're referring to a woman, the bitch. Well, you know, that's not sexy. You know, <laughs> I completely <That's>, agree. <laughs> that once again, you want you know just. Respect to women. Give women uh, the title of a lady, <laughs> no matter yes, what. Yes, <laughs> yes. I totally agree with that. You know, one of the things that I love about uh, doing this show is I get to really talk to a lot of different people. So yeah. people from all different uh, professions, people from different cultures, different countries, all kinds of different things. But there are some what I like to call universal truths that seem to come across all the different people that I talk about, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you just hit on one right there, which is, you know, treat women with respect. Give them the, the position of, you know, lady, I think, is, is that the yeah, word? Yeah, a lady, yeah, a lady, yeah. That's, that's, you know, because I know the complaints I hear often from men here, oh, you know, the feminist movement, well, blah, 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 you know, oh, they try to reduce it, no. They can believe what they believe, but you live your life with principle. Yes. A woman with respect, no matter what. You know, no matter yes. what. That, that's a mic drop moment right there. Treat a woman with respect, no matter what. <laughs> you're angry or not angry, just control your words. Don't start cursing, you know, because you, lo you lost your mind. No, that's not sexy. <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> Okay, well, this has been a great conversation. We are getting to the end of it. Um, I would love it if you could tell listeners where they could find more of your work, how they can get your books. Yeah, so I have a website called uh, thefrenchperspective.com. And um, most of my uh, books are on Amazon and Barn and Nobles. And yeah, they find uh, Love Like a French, uh, Vive la Différence, and uh, Love Like a Man. So yeah, by Guy Blaise. So I'm, I'm actually going to check those out. I'm really curious. I'd like to read them uh, and uh, see. I think they're, I, from talking with you, I know that there's great information in there, but also I feel uh, like you given my experience that I'm going to, I'm going to relate to a lot of what you share in there. So I'm going to check those out myself. Okay. I got one last question for you. It's a question that we ask everybody that comes on the show. Uh, so what is your best sexual talent? Uh, cuddling. Ah. Yes. I think that's the best moment of sharing feelings. Hmm. You being in France, it's called a cala. You sit with your partner in front of TV, play with her hair. Sometimes you don't have to speak. Your hand will speak for you. There are so many ways to speak. You can use your hand, play with your partner's hair while you're watching the news, the TV, the movie. Sex doesn't start in the bedroom. Yes, that is absolutely true. 100%. We used to talk about that all the time on this show, how sex doesn't start just when you reach the bedroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I love about this, right? Is having you on, you come from a different culture, you've got a different background and perspective, and yet here are those universal truths just yeah. filtering up to the surface again, right? Sex exactly. doesn't start when you hit the bedroom. Doesn't matter where you're from. And Valentine's Day is 365 days. Yes, 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 yes. Great advice. Well, Guy, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. All right, everybody. That's all the time we have for this episode, and I will see you next week.
We hope you like this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoy this show, subscribe, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. And for more free, exclusive content, join us in the Passion Vault at CelineRemy.com forward slash vault. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y dot com forward slash vault. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing.